one, scene one of Dr. Faustus. The erudite doctor is alone in his study, contemplating what line of scholarship he will pursue. He's earned a higher degree in theology, but suspects his interests may have changed. He first considers the study of logic or reasoning, whose foundation is Greek philosopher Aristotle's analytics. Deciding he's mastered the skill of debate already, Faustus decides against it. Faustus then considers medicine, well aware there is great money and fame in practicing it, especially for discovering some wondrous cure. Yet, he is already an accomplished physician and finds no satisfaction in his success. Faustus considers law and thinks about Roman Emperor Justinian, whose works form the basis for the study of law during the Renaissance. But then he thinks it's tedious and trivial. Okay, no law for Faustus. Rejecting it, he comes full circle, deciding to stick to his formal study of religion, his wheelhouse. But then he reads a line in St. Jerome's translation of the Bible, the reward of sin is death. If humankind is fated to sin and so fated to die an everlasting death, Faustus decides theology also seems pointless. Having eliminated the three main subjects studied at a Renaissance university, Faustus turns to the metaphysics of magicians and necromancy, the practice of communicating with the dead, often to predict the future. This non-traditional study promises money, pleasure, power, respect, and influence. Lusting after this power, Faustus decides in favor of magic and promptly sends his servant, Wagner, to invite his two friends, Valdes and Cornelius, to come visit. Faustus is then confronted by the good angel and the evil angel. The good angel begs Faustus to put aside his blasphemous books of magic and just read the Bible. The evil angel encourages Faustus in his planned course of study. Faustus decides to stick with the sinister study of magic. When his buddies, Valdes and Cornelius arrive, Faustus tells them he's become possessed with the idea of practicing magic. Valdes assures Faustus that his intelligence guided by their experience and books will bring them all fame and privilege. Cornelius adds that once Faustus sees what magic can do, he won't want to do anything else. The two agree to help Faustus learn the basics of magic, and he invites them to have dinner with him that night.